Today, I am going to be painting Lizard from this awesome Spider-Man diorama that I have been working on for a few weeks now. So if you've missed some of the last videos, I have gone through all of the steps to get me to the point I am today. I've got all of my stuff primed and I am just ready to get started on this lizard because he's the biggest piece of this diorama and I've got a good feeling about him. So I am going to just kind of go through this whole video. It's going to be a little bit long, but you're going to see every step I take along the way and some of my thought processes of how I actually am going to paint this because I, I haven't started yet. So I'm just going to assume there's some really awesome nuggets in here because I've got some cool ideas for him. So let's go ahead, get started. And I'm going to jump to the spray booth so I can start airbrushing this monster lizard. So first I'm going to be using this dark green from Vallejo game color line. And I'm using just airbrush thinner and using my airbrush to get this base coat down on the skin. An important thing to note is I'm not fully saturating the entire model. I'm leaving some of the black in certain areas on the skin because I want to have some of that shading on there. Now I am hitting it a little harder in a couple areas where I want them to be more highlighted, but for the most part I am not doing it 100% in all the areas. I want to have some of those dark shadows. Then I'm switching to a little bit of a brighter green and I'm really just using it as a highlight. I'm not fully covering the entire model, just certain parts that I want to have that brighter green tail because there are areas I want it to be a little darker. Once I've got the green all set, I take this scaly hide color from the Army Painters and thin that down, put it in my airbrush, and I'm really just focusing on the soft under part of the tail and not getting in the cracks. I'm just focusing on the high raised areas. So now I have the lizard all green and painted all of the base colors that I'm wanting. So you can see it's darker in some areas, brighter in other areas. You can especially see this in the tail. So you can see here of how like I kind of varied the color of green to really get some different variations. Now what I want to do is I want to bring back some of those shadows that I might have lost. And I'm going to go ahead and add just a general ink wash to all of the green. Now, the one thing is, is I do want to be careful that I don't get a lot of the ink all over the white because I do have overspray and you can see that, but I just don't want to get even more dark, you know, ink or paint on the white because the next step is I'm going to have to paint all of this lab coat white. And if you're wondering what an ink wash is, I actually did a tutorial on how I make my own ink wash. And this is actually what's left from that video. And I will go ahead and put that video right up here for you. One thing I will note, when you're about to do an ink wash like I'm about to, it is actually a good practice to do a clear coat over all of this. But I do not want to do a clear coat because I still have base colors that I haven't even added yet. And I don't want to do a clear coat over my primer because even though this is white, this is still a primer. All I'm going to do is I am going to really do a quick wash on this and wherever it falls, it falls and then I'm going to let it dry from there. Now, I do already know with these paints specifically, they are not going to just rub off real quickly if I just get it a little wet with the ink wash. But some paints, some of those cheaper acrylic paints, they will just start peeling and flaking off 
instantly as soon as you get them wet. So you definitely want to test out your actual paints with ink washes if you're deciding not to do a clear coat. But you can see already how I've got a lot of good shadows in there just from how I decided to airbrush it. And I'm really excited to see once I get some ink inside these cracks right here. And that's gonna really bring some good lines to these scales. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my ink wash. I've got a little dish right here and I'm just gonna pour it right in. And the nice thing is about using your own DIY ink wash, I'm never really concerned if I pour out too much in my little dish because I've got so much of it. So first I'm going to take a big brush and I'm gonna move this stuff aside. And then I've got all my clips. I'm gonna go ahead and clip my stuff right now just so I've got it and I don't have to get ink all over my hands. All right, so I'm gonna take my big brush and I'm just going to quickly just go over this with the ink. And the key here is I just don't want any pooling whatsoever. So if there's a little pooling, I've just got a paper towel here and I'll start to sop up the ink on that and then try to pull it off. So you can see how all of that really starts to get into those dark areas and give me that shading that I'm wanting. Now I'm just gonna speed through these real quick. And I don't care if I get the ink wash on the rest of this since this hasn't even been painted yet. This is still just the primer. And you can see how all of that ink wash is falling into those cracks and really highlighting those scales. And that's what I'm wanting. And I am very sloppy with this, not really caring. And then it's just making sure that I don't miss anything because you want a complete coverage with it. And I'm not pressing hard. I'm literally just trying to drag my brush across the scales and wherever the ink falls is where it falls. So now I actually have this guy and what I'm going to do is I'm going to be using a smaller brush for this because I'm really gonna be focusing in on the areas. I'm not just kind of sloshing it down. So first I'm just going to try to take care of these areas. And if I get too much wash in there, I just kind of sop it up with my brush. I'm using the paper towel to just kind of sop it up. And you can see that it is just kind of getting all of those areas nice and dark. And some of the ink is going through some of those cracks, which is expected. And I am just gonna wipe it off with a paper towel because there's no reason why I need to just let it dry because ultimately I'm going to have to paint over that. So there he is. I've gotten all the areas with a nice ink wash and now he is ready to just dry as he is. All right, so I'm gonna let all this stuff dry and then I'll come back to it and then we'll move on to the next step. And this step, next step is really gonna make everything pop. Okay, so now I have all of my ink wash in there and you can see how it's gotten darker in spots, which is awesome. And I've also got Lizard here and you can see how the ink wash just did nothing but amazing things for him. So even in the cracks here, you can see right in the edges and along the edges here, it's just looking great. And that's exactly the purpose of the ink wash. And you can see how it's just got darker on the edges. It's really just there to give some nice shadowing to those cracks and like the ear hole. Here you go. Let's see if we can get in there. So you can see the ear hole right there around the teeth, even though I'm going to be painting the teeth and the tongue, but like that jawline, I'm definitely not going to be painting. So I got everything I definitely wanted out of that. So now, 
This is the part where we're really just going to kick this thing up a notch. And I am going to do a dry brush on this really to just accentuate the highlights now. And I wanna go almost comic-y with this. So I am going to go with this bright green. And first I'm just gonna see if this even works because this might not be the right color for me. So I'm gonna go ahead, put a little on my board here and then just get a little bit on my makeup brush and then just kind of get it off there. And what I'm gonna do is first test it on a foot. So the foot got a lot of good details, so I am going to just first really just try to see what this can bring out if I use a bright green. And I'm only going in one direction too. Okay, so now I have the lizard foot all done and you can see how I've got some of that shading in there. And just to give you a comparison, this is how much brighter we brought this out. So there's the one foot and here's the other one. And the cool thing is, is when you really look at it, all of that detail is just completely popped out. And I really like what that did versus this to where it's still really dark. So now I'm just gonna start in and dry brush the rest of all of this. Okay, so just kind of a quick check to make sure they both look good and I didn't miss anything. It looks like this toe could use just a little more. All right, so now I'm going to just stay on track with this green and go through and dry brush all of the other pieces and parts. All right, so now I'm gonna to move to a little bit bigger brush for this tail. Now that I have everything done for the skin on the torso, and then I also got all of the hands and feet done as well. So same exact process, just going to be using a bigger brush. And here we go. And just so you can see here, let's get a little close. You can see the detail of how all of the ridges right here are all like this bright green and then we've got the dark cracks. And give you the comparison of here it is with just the wash and here it is with the dry brush on top of the wash. So it's gonna look a lot different by the time we're done. So I haven't done the bottom of the tail yet and I'm going to be holding off on that for the next step. So I've got this all nice and dry brushed. I think maybe I just want to hit a little bit harder in some of those areas that I know are going to be seen. All right, so I'm taking some of this Irish moss and just kind of going along the spine here because I really want this spine to pop. So you can see how it's a lot lighter because I want to focus on that first and then we're going to focus on the bottom and also on some of these spines on the tail. 
Now I'm gonna do the same thing on these hands, just a little more than I already did. Because I really wanna just accentuate this. Like, I want to show some different colors because, you know, lizards don't just have a single color or just two colors in them. And this will also help with that, bringing out that kind of comic booky, stylized look that I'm wanting. And I'm just being very selective where this is going. So you can see how much brighter I'm really getting in that comic look, because that's really what I want. We've got kind of a comic look to them. If you see, I don't know if you can tell, but on the top of the skull, we did that brighter green, and then it kind of goes to this darker green here. So that, I don't think the camera's picking it up as good as it actually looks, but we are pretty much finalized with the skin itself. Now, the last thing we have to do is work on this bottom. And I want this bottom to be a little more muted. So I'm gonna be using this Wild Wasabi. And with the same dry brush, just gonna be using that again. Kinda of get that saturated with my brush here. And I am essentially just going to be dry brushing the bottom only because I wanna keep that dark texture still there. But this is also going to help me blend into the green that I just did. So there we go. I have that darker tail on the bottom brighter on the top and he is going to look great so let's get a final assembly to see what this is actually going to look like so he is looking fantastic all right so now we have the pants and the shirt and the coat that is going to be the next steps and i think i might just go after the pants because there's going to be a lot going on with this to torso and we could actually fully wrap up the bottom part so let's move to that next okay so the last thing i have is this gloss black and what i'm going to use that for is all of these nails i want them to be shiny so all of the nails are going to be in gloss black and i am not going to water this down i don't think i'm going to leave it as is just so i can get a nice thick coat of it So real quick, I just want to say thank you to all of my patrons this month. If you want to be one of my patrons, you can get exclusive access to my private Discord channels where we chat about painting, 3D printing, and just showing off some really awesome works of art that we're working on. And you also can get exclusive access to all of my behind the scenes videos and photos of what I'm working on currently. And I also put out exclusive Patreon only tutorials that I am not putting on YouTube. So if you're interested, I'll go ahead and put the link below for you and let's get back to the video. Now I'm going to use purple, but what I'm going to do is mix a little black into it. Because if you see, this is a little too bright and I don't wanna go that crazy with it. Now I'm probably going to do some dry brushing to this afterwards, but what I'm gonna do is add just a little bit of black, make this a little darker, then a dry brush. Same thing as I did with the tail, but now I'm trying different colors.
So you can see it is really dark, but it's got this purplish tint to it now. So I think this is going to look real good. So I'm probably going to do just a couple coats on this just to really bring out that purple and cover up that black. Okay, so now I have this in this dark purple and on camera it almost looks black, but there is a little bit of a purple to it. So now I'm going to take my makeup brush as my dry brush and just use straight purple and get some of those highlights to really make this pop. And there we go. So now I have a good purple highlight. It's just enough to where in the right light you can kind of see it has some purple in it. So I think this is going to be done. So now we have the pants 100% done. And let's see it. And let's see it in contrast. Oh yeah. Look at that. It's looking sweet. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to painting the actual shirt here. We're gonna do the shirt, then I'm going to do the lab coat. But before I actually get the shirt, I'm going to get some of the edging of the lab coat to make sure that I can get it because it's a little difficult where it's at right now. All right, for his lab coat, I'm just using straight white and obviously with some water. Okay, so now I have my white edges all done on each side where the t-shirt is going to be hitting because I was just kind of concerned about getting those edges. So now all I'm going to do is paint this a very, very dark gray because the original is like a black. I'm gonna paint this medium gray and adding in some black to this medium gray because I want it more than medium gray. So for these bigger areas, I'm using a bigger brush, obviously, because this is going to take multiple coats and I'm just staying away from the edges because I'm going to use a finer brush when I get to those edges. Alright, so now I have this black paint that I watered down a lot. You can see how watered down it is. And I'm basically going to treat this kind of like a controlled wash, where I'm going to darken some of those cracks and crevices. And then I'm going to have a clean brush where I'm going to control where that lands. And kind of feather it out. So the t-shirt is now done. I've got some darker shading here and I just don't know if the camera is actually showing it. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. All right, so lab coat is next. We're gonna get all of that nice and white. 
Okay, now to get the coat all nice and white. So here we go. I'm just gonna be using this same watered down white. So I've got a thicker white and a more watered down white to just kind of get in some of those cracks if I need to. Okay, so the lab coat is all nice and white now. The shirt is done, and now I am going to work on this mouth. So what I'm going to do is get my base coat first, which is I'm going to use this crusted sore, which is just a really dark maroon from Army Painter. And I'm just going to put a little bit on my wet palette and just get in there and get a nice clean coverage of it. Okay, so now I have the entire mouth all this dark base color. Now what I'm going to do is kind of this webbing on the side of his mouth. I'm going to get it a little pink. So what I'm going to be using is this Warlock Purple. And I'm just kind of going to water it down a little bit more and thin it good on my wet palette. And then just kind of start using it as like a highlight. So. Here we go, let's jump to that. So you can see that I just kind of thinned it out really good and just got some of that highlighting in there. Now I'm gonna do it to the next side. And there you go. So that is just giving a little bit of a pinkish highlight to it. All right, so the next thing is I'm going to be using this glistening blood and that is what I'm going to paint the tongue as. And I'm using a really thin coat because I want this dark to kind of show through because I also just don't want to have a ton of contrasting colors. I just want some subtle shades all in the same family. And there we go. All right, so now what I'm going to take is this dragon red and I am going to do a very light dry brush on the tongue. All right, so there we go. It just gave a little bit of a definition to some of the tongue ridges. And I also went ahead and threw in some of this pixie pink. 
and did a very, very, very light dry brush on it just to mute out the tongue just a little bit. So the next thing is the teeth and then the mouth will pretty much be done. For the teeth, I'm going to be using this Game Color Bone White. I really like this for like fangs because it's not ultra bright, but it's bright enough. So put a little bit on my wet palette. All right, so I'm taking a very fine tip brush and what I'm going to do is just start painting every single tooth individually. All right, one down, a whole mouthful to go. And there is a mouthful of teeth. So I'm gonna let this dry and then I'm gonna put a wash to make them even look nastier because they're pretty vibrant right now, even though it's a muted color. So let's let this dry and I'll come back to it. All right, so I'm gonna use this soft tone wash from the Army Painter and two drops should be plenty. And I'm also going to water this down just a little bit. So now I'm just gonna paint over these teeth. So I figured out that the watered down is just too muted because I am using the soft tone. So I'm going to head and I'm basically using a half and half of mixed water and straight. And all I'm doing is painting the entire teeth. So you can see there. And then I'm taking a Q-tip and just rubbing across the tips of them. And this is taking away the wash from the tips of the teeth so they're whiter. And that way I get like a nice gradient right there. So you can see that gradient on the teeth. And there is that wonderful, terrifying mouth. All right, so the next thing now I have to do is the eyes. And I am going to be using this sun yellow on the eyes. And this isn't going to take much, so I'm literally just going to put a drop right there on the side of my paint palette. A nice little trick here, I'll also put another drop of just water right beside it, and I'll kind of mix it together per brush stroke. And I need my magnifying glasses because there's no way I could see this. And there we go. So I have the lizard and he is pretty much completely painted. I've got his face almost done. There's just a few things that I really wanna fix on it. But the big thing here is the lab coat. I've got this, you know, scaly green monster, but then this lab coat is just pristine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I actually am going to give this a little bit of a grunge to it as well as just some general shading. And all of this is going to be with my weathering pigments. And if you're unfamiliar with what weathering pigments are, I went ahead and created a video of me actually creating this right here. And I will put a link to that right up here. And other than that, we're just gonna dive right in. The one thing with these weathering pigments, it is a fine dust, so it isn't a bad idea to wear a respirator when doing this. And all I'm going to be using is some makeup brushes for this. I might get some smaller brushes, just depending on what we run into on there. But I have a few different sized makeup brushes. 
So the first thing you always want to do is look at your model and figure out what you're really wanting to do. And I do know on the inside of this jacket right here, I am wanting some gradations around that cuff and also on him a little bit. And also along any of these like seams. So like right here, I probably won't want to do too much to it, but I might. But any of these wrinkles and things like that, I definitely want to do something with it. And also it's good to have like underneath the armpits. I'm just going to do some general shading with this. I'm going to try to avoid any of the colored painted areas that I've already done. But if I get them, I get them. So all I gotta do is just stamp this in the pigment powder and then that will be on there. And then the first thing is, is just as a test, I'm gonna go underneath here just to test it out. All right, looking good. So I'm gonna just start in on some of these areas right here. And I'm really just trying to get it in those cracked areas. So you can see how that really gives some nice shade to it. So if you can see there, just giving a little more dimension. Now I'm gonna switch over to this one, this little brush. way I can get in those cracks a little easier. It's starting to look like a little bit of a dirty lab coat. <laughs> All right, so now it's looking really good. I've got the lizard coat all nice and grunged up just enough. I didn't go overboard with it because I still wanted it to look like, you know, he came out of the lab. So it is just dirty to where maybe he has run out of the sewer. So now I am ready for a clear coat on this because once we've done this I have got to do a nice clear coat all over it and what I'm going to use is this matte finish and I'm just going to do a light dusting over top of this just to kind of seal some of this because these pigments will rub off if you actually you know wipe them like push your hand against them really hard or something so I'm gonna go ahead and jump over to the spray booth and get a nice even clear coat on this guy. All right, this next step, I'm going to add this gloss varnish everywhere in his mouth. I am ready to start gluing some of these pieces together. First thing I'm gonna do is glue the feet to the bottom of the torso. All 
All right, so now let's go ahead and glue this guy together. So I am so excited that I have the first part of this diorama officially done. And looking at it, it just looks so good. I cannot wait to see the rest of this diorama and how it all incorporates with each other. I'm super happy with how Lizard turned out, with the lab coat of how, you know, just a little bit dirty it is, his glossy mouth, and also just those scales and the color of his claws and hands, I mean, it just, I'm very happy. I wanted that comic book look to it and I got it. So thanks a lot for watching. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And thanks a lot for sticking around and I hope to see you in the next video.